Do you want to take the stress out of your projects that you're working on? Join me today as I can show you how you can organize one or even more than one project on the go at a time with the simple system that I use. I'm going to teach you how to choose your supplies, organize your workflow, create a workspace, and then get started. Let's go! So welcome back everyone. I'm so glad you could join me again today. We're going to try something different with this project. So the next thing that we're doing here is making Luna Lappin's friends Wilhelmina Woodmouse. Now what we're going to do different is um, I just thought it would be kind of fun to see if you guys wanted to try a little bit of a sew along with me. Um, nothing too formal but I'm going to put this project out in chunks over the next four weeks and then at the end of four weeks, I'll just compile it all together into a video for those who want to watch the whole thing at once. So what we're going to do is on week number one, we're doing our planning and our cutting. Week number two, we are going to make Wilhelmina's head. On week number three, we're going to make the body and the tail. And then on week number four, we're going to make the arms and legs and assemble the whole project together. I think by doing it this way would give you a chance to sew along with me. So after we look at the supplies and the planning today, you can go out this week and buy whatever you need to or find it in your stash and get the project cut out and ready to go. And then next week, we can start working on the head. All right, let's get started. So I just wanted to talk to everyone about the project planning now. You can see here I have the supplies assembled and ready to go. We have all the pattern pieces cut out, clearly marked and labeled, and ready to go. Next, I did choose um, a fabric, a fabric that is for making the mouse. This is some, it's like scrap fabric that was given to me, but I'll just show you a little more up close here. Right, it's one of these, um, almost like a Velux type feel to it. Uh, polar fleece, whatever you want to call it. So it is a fleece type thing. It's in a soft, um, warm gray, uh, very soft, light color. So what I came up with is that in addition to using this for Wilhelmina's body, I'm going to use this fabric. It's going to be for her ears and her foot pads. I'm going to embroider her nose with this pink floss. And then the directions call for brown floss as well. So this little um, beige color floss I'm gonna use on the outsides of the nose. You'll see in the picture what that looks like. And then I do have the elastic cord that the directions call for. And then I have my buttons. I do have the two different size buttons selected out. You can see they're not even the same buttons I just put them in this bag so I don't lose them and then get frustrated but anyways the two smaller buttons here are going to be used for the eyes and the bigger buttons are for attaching the limbs now if you all recall I do have a tip I'm gonna put this in a tip of the week too about keeping your patterns when you make your own patterns that you trace out or do something you have to have a storage system for them in this case um, these projects are so small that a simple little number eight size window works I just label each one like this just like that I make sure I label the envelope and now we put all the pieces away the way I organize my supplies together so that I know where everything is and I have my workflow planned. You can see I even plan out approximately how long I think it's going to take me to do the project. Is this a project I plan to do in a weekend or is it something I mean to do over the week or a month even? 
I think if you try and plan out how many hours it realistically is going to take you to complete a project, then you can take a guess with how many hours a week you have to dedicate to your craft or your sewing, um, how long you think it's gonna take you to get that project done. And then you just break it down into bite-sized chunks and you'll be on your way. The next thing I do is I get a basket to hold my project. Whatever my current sewing projects are, I have a few of those baskets on the go. So we're just gonna put everything away into the basket, the pattern, the supplies, the buttons. This way everything is organized into one space and ready to go. When I'm partway through a project, I just let the project rest in there until I can come back to continue sewing. And I do find it helps to not lose parts, not lose pattern pieces, and just keep yourself organized and ready. To... Now that you have everything ready to go like this, we're ready to get started with cutting. I also just want to try and show you, I don't know if you can see it so well or not, there is a nap to this fabric. If I push up, you can definitely see some shadowing, like you can see where my fingers have been here and then if I push the nap back down, then it looks pretty smooth. So I'm going to do this as the grain wise for the body and obviously with the nap brushing down. Next, you're going to want to take your pattern punch if you have one or otherwise you can use something like scissors and you can see it's just like a it's like a hole punch and so you're just going to slide that in where you got your notches like this and you see it just cuts out a nice little opening for you to mark your chalk there's not a lot of pattern notches on this particular pattern there's only three pieces that even have notches on them this time around, but that's all right. We're still going to mark them and use it as we're supposed to. And then the same with this. And that's it. Now we can mark the chalk marks onto the pieces that we've cut out. Here we have it, all the pieces cut out. Four of the legs cut in felt. Ooh, I got a little slice there. I might have to recut that one. But, all right, I'm gonna recut one leg. But anyways, four arms, four legs, count them one, two, three body pieces. They're all sort of pinned together there. Two heads, two inner ears, two outer ears, one tail to roll the base of the body and the foot pads. So here we have it guys, we have all our supplies planned, we have things cut out, we're ready for the next steps. And there it is everyone, my project box with everything in it ready to go. We got our pieces cut out and marked with the pen, pattern pieces in the envelope, spare fabric and the remaining supplies for the project over here. And from here, our next steps are to check the directions and begin the assembly of the head. I hope you found today's video interesting and helpful. Thanks so much for watching to the end. Because you know what guys, watching to the end helps this channel so much just watching the video to the end. And of course, please don't forget to hit the like, 
and subscribe button as well if you haven't already. Your views and your time is appreciated here and I really hope we can build a community together of people that like to sew really cool things. So join me for this sew along next week and I hope you'll have your supplies ready to go as we start Wilhelmina Woodhouse's head and I hope today you've seen the step-by-step -step planning that you can do for your project. If you look at how many hours you think the project might take you to do, four hours, 10 hours, 20 hours. If you can try and take an educated guess on how long you think it will take you to do the project, then you can break it down into the bite-sized chunks like I did, where I'm showing you we're gonna do this over four weeks. So remember guys, the four step plan that you wanna do is you simply want to organize or gather your supplies is step number one. Step number two, you want to organize your workflow. This is where you're planning out when you're going to do and what you're going to do during those times. And then step number three is creating a workspace and that's creating that storage space that you will keep the project in between sessions when you're working on it. Plus you should have a space in mind where you're actually going to build that project. And then of course, finally, step number four is just get started because we don't want to get stuck in the planning stage. We do want to carry through with actually bringing the project to action, bringing it to life. So I hope guys that there's a whole bunch of you are going to tune in and we're going to have a whole bunch of Wilhelmina wood mouses ready at the end of the month and we can post them all up on Instagram together at the Victorian Thimble on Instagram and it'll be great to see your project works there. Thanks so much for watching guys and thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week with your supplies and your needle and thread at the Victorian Thimble. Bye.